Good happy Tuesday morning, September 17, 2019. I'm Riley King, and welcome to the Riley King Newscast, right here on the Riley King Network. Let's begin. First up, Attorney General, death of man whose body was found at transfer station was accidental. William Bradley likely entered dumpster for shelter, investigators say. Let's take a listen to the video from WMUR News 9. We feel that if a customer wants their product and they're ambitious and they want to do it today, if we have it here in stock, we have the people in the truck in, and why put off till tomorrow what you can do today? Visit us at powellstone.com. Tonight, the death of a man whose body was found at a waste transfer station in Auburn is being called accidental. In May, workers discovered the body of 36-year-old William Bradley in a pile of trash. Investigators say Bradley likely got into a dumpster for shelter and was inside when it was loaded into a garbage truck. Investigators say he was intoxicated at the time of his death. Okay, and there you go on that video and that report. Man accused of punching man in Manchester, resulting in victim's death. Prosecutors say surveillance video shows suspect punching man from behind. Let's take a listen to the video from WMUR News 9, Andy Hirschberger. Customers will call in or email in and just tell us that he was at the store and from the beginning of the sale till the delivery, it was a great experience. And as a business owner, that's what we strive for. Visit us at powellstone.com. David Samaria is charged with negligent homicide and first degree assault after prosecutors say he punched 57 year old Robert Lachance in the head, a blow they say led to his death. Prosecutors say it started with an argument between the two Friday night on Spruce Street, where Samaria claimed Lachance tried to take his backpack, and Samaria pushed him backwards to the ground. But prosecutors say a review of nearby surveillance cameras told a different story. And the video shows the defendant walking up behind him and to his right, and um, basically sucker punching him in the head. RL immediately falls to the ground. He apparently strikes his head on the pavement. That's what led to his death. Prosecutors say Lachance also had a black eye along with cuts to his head and chin. Defense lawyers questioned when and how Lachance even got those injuries. Just because there was a catastrophic injury here, according to the state's representation, doesn't mean that the defendant intended that result. But prosecutors say this was a terrible result or were a very minor altercation. This defendant got into an argument with a guy who was cleaning up milk crates, throwing them in a dumpster. Over that minor little thing, he chooses to punch RL, which results in his death. Supporters of both Samaria and Lachance chose not to make any comment today. Samaria is being held without bail. Reporting live in Manchester, I'm Andy Hirschberger, WMUR News Not. Okay, and there you go on that video and that report. Manchester Police investigating shots fired Monday night. No injuries were reported, police say. Let's take a listen to the video from WMUR News 9. Ew! This water smells! It's 
smelly water is ew. It can be more serious than just the smell. At Capital Well Clean Water Center, we get the ew out of the water and make it. And right now, Manchester police are investigating reports of multiple shots fired. Several 911 calls came in around 9.15 tonight on Green Street near Beach Street. Thankfully, no one was hurt. Police say they do not believe this was a random act. Okay, and there you go on that video and that report. Seabrook host forum to discuss concerned aimed over dose death. Police say eight have died already this year in Seabrook. Let's take a listen to the video from WMUR News 9, Mike Cronin. We feel that if a customer wants their product and they're ambitious and they want to do it today, if we have it here in stock, we have the people in the truck in, and why put off from tomorrow what you can do today? Visit us at powellstone.com. The faces of lives lost to addiction in New Hampshire serving as a powerful backdrop to tonight's meeting in Seabrook, where an alarming trend is gripping the town. Not only is it ruining the lives of addicts, it's ruining their families' lives as well. It's destroying families. According to Seabrook Police, drug overdoses are down in 2019, but the deaths are up. Last year, six people died from ODs, Eight have already died this year. There is an enforcement piece to it, and that's, of course, where we come in. But the services provided to those struggling with addiction are what we need to improve. State Senator Tom Sherman worked with the town to bring together government officials and those on the front lines to talk about how to help this community. It's not getting better in the town, and the town doesn't have the services in the community than many other communities have. Services, housing, and transportation, some of the solutions that advocates say need to become priorities in Seabrook. Our town has lost hope. And until our leaders come forward and bring that hope back and let the people know they really are going to do something to help, and that's bring the services back here, I don't know what's going to happen. The numbers are staggering already. Okay, and there you go on that video and that report. Companies on education funding brings lawmakers, governors closer to budget deal. Governor says he won't budget on business tax rate. Let's take a listen to the video from WMUR News 9, Adam Sexton. The customers will call in or email in and just tell us that I was at the store and from the beginning of the sale till the delivery, it was a great experience. And as a business owner, that's what we strive for. Visit us at powellstone.com. New Hampshire has gone nearly 80 days without a state budget, operating on a continuing resolution that has left state agencies juggling finances and a cloud of uncertainty over big issues like education funding. There's a lot of people who are going to be affected in a lot of ways, uh, and so the sooner we can get to a, a compromise, uh, the better it is for everybody. This week, after a summer of meetings between the governor and top lawmakers, a deal appears within reach. When it comes to the key issues of education funding and property tax relief, dollar for dollar, um, I found a way to compromise and, and fund 99 0.7% of what the legislature passed. So that's a huge step forward. Governor Chris Sununu tells News 9 while he won't budge on business taxes, 
he is agreeing to support much of what legislative Democrats want for schools. When you're looking at $16 million for Manchester, $2, two million a year for places like Berlin that, that really need that type of opportunity. Um, we've been innovative about how we do it. We found the education funding, um, and that seems to be one of the key issues there. So we think that'll help get it over the line. Details aren't being released, but Senate President Donna Susi confirms there is an emerging consensus on education. That's one area where I think the governor has compromised and moved, and there are certainly areas that we've offered where we were willing to move. There, there remain two or three items that we're going to continue to discuss with the governor. Those two or three items still on the table essentially boil down to business tax rates, and that could still be a sticking point. But those who were involved in very similar budget veto negotiations in different roles back in 2015 say the continuing resolution that expires at the end of the month puts pressure on both sides to get a deal done. And I think eventually we will. I don't know that it'll be this week, but we will. In Concord, Adam Sexton, WMUR News Now. Okay, and there you go on that video and that report. U.S. features point to slightly lower open. U.S. stocks were set to open slightly lower Tuesday morning. Trump backtracks after Saudi attack. I don't want war with anybody. Let's take a listen to that video from World News with David Muir. President Trump and what he said late today on the possibility of U.S. military action against Iran after that massive attack on oil facilities in Saudi Arabia, one of the world's largest facilities targeted there, an unprecedented blow to the world's energy supply. Drivers here in the U.S. will see this, too, in gas prices. Administration officials quickly pointing the finger at Iran. The president at one point tweeting, the U.S. is locked and loaded. But tonight, what he said when asked, is Iran behind this and will the U.S. strike? ABC's chief White House correspondent, Jonathan Carl, was in the Oval Office asking the questions. After the attack on the world's largest oil refinery in Saudi Arabia, today a restrained response from the president. I don't want war with anybody. I'm somebody that would like not to have war. The attack produced an inferno so large, the smoke was visible from outer space. A senior administration official tells ABC News the attack involved nearly a dozen cruise missiles and at least 20 armed drones launched from Iranian soil. Within hours, Secretary of State Mike Pompeo pointed the finger directly at Iran, tweeting, Iran has now launched an unprecedented attack on the world's energy supply. Today, the president was less definitive. Have you seen evidence, proof that Iran was behind the attack? Well, it's looking that way. As soon as we find out definitively, we'll let you know. Immediately following the attacks, President Trump tweeted the United States was, quote, locked and loaded, depending on verification. But today, he said this. That was an attack on Saudi Arabia, and uh, that wasn't an attack on us. But we would certainly help them. They've been a great ally. Do you still think it's the responsibility of the Saudis to defend themselves? Oh, or I think, the I think it be? is certainly the responsibility of them to do a big, a big deal of their defense. The fact is that the Saudis uh, are going to have a lot of uh, involvement in this if we decide to do something. Uh, they'll be very much involved, and that includes payment, and they understand that fully. The Iranian-backed Houthi rebels in Yemen have claimed responsibility, releasing a propaganda video of drones flying over the Saudi refinery. Iran, for its part, insists it had nothing to do with it. What's your message to Iran right now? I think uh, I'll have a stronger message or maybe no message at all uh, when we get the final results of what we're looking at. But right now, it's too soon to say. There's plenty of time. You know, there's no rush. John Carl with us live at the White House tonight. And, John, the president had tweeted the U.S. is uh, locked and loaded. But today it did seem uh, there was a much more cautious tone with you. He sure did, David. The president spoke quite a bit about the power of the U.S. military today, about U.S. military might. But this did not sound like a president eager to get involved in another military conflict in the Middle East. 
All right, John Carl leading us off on a Monday. John, thank you. Hi. Okay, and there you go on that video and that report. And that is it for this morning edition of the Riley King Newscast right here on the Riley King Network. I hope you all have a great rest of your day. And I'll see back here later on today for another newscast. And I'll have a news report coming up in a little bit. Goodbye, everyone.